guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about writing your own Rails template with Rails Bytes, and we're gonna be using Simple Cubs installation as an example to do this. So we're gonna be writing a Rails application template to install Simple Cub to your application and set it up uh, as needed. So let's dive in to creating our Rails Byte to do this. Now we're gonna need to create a Rails Byte, and in our script section is where we're gonna write our commands. We have got a helpful sidebar here with all of the commands from Rails that you can use, but I also wanna point out that you will have access to all of Thor's actions. One of those is prepend to file, which we're gonna be using today, um, but all of these are available to you because Rails application templates are built on top of Thor. So let's dive into the SimpleCov uh, example and how to install it. Now, if you aren't familiar, SimpleCov is a code coverage report generating tool, so it will monitor your test suites and generate a report to tell you how well covered your code is um, based upon your test suite that ran. So your Rails app templates have a special um, set of commands. One of those is the gem command, which looks very similar to what's in your gem file. That gem file is actually interpreted by Bundler, and it installs and requires the gems for you. But as the gem command in the application template uh, is defined, this is actually going to just say, hey, go put this line in the gem file. So it's actually different, even though it looks exactly the same. Now, the second step that you need to do is run bundle install to actually install the gem. That's going to make sure that the gem is available. And this is something that is a little bit different than you might expect. Now in our new Rails application, if you were to specify this template, it's gonna run Bundler to install your gems automatically, and you can use the after bundle block. But Rails application templates can also be used against existing Rails apps. So we can use this to install SimpleCub in a brand new app or in an existing one. And we're gonna take a look at the example of an existing app today. So we can leave this out and what will happen is this will simply add it to our gem file and do nothing else. It won't even install it. So if we were to add this in, um, this will run bundle on our existing application. So we can copy our script command to the clipboard and we can paste it in our terminal inside of our Rails applications folder. And this will add it to the gem file and then run bundle install. Now the problem is, Bundler modifies your environment variables, and so installing SimpleCov here is going to fail because it's looking for SimpleCov in the wrong locations. So what we need to do is actually modify our script to run bundle with an unbundled env. So we can say bundler dot with unbundled env, then run this command. If we update our template now, we can go and run this again. But first, we're gonna to need to open up our gem file. And at the bottom, we wanna get rid of our simple cov because that last one failed. We can run it again and we can have a blank application again without the simple cov gem. You'll see now it gets added to the gem file and Bundler runs correctly. So that is cleaning up the environment variables so that Bundler can run successfully for us. Now this is great, it installed the gem and now we have it in our gem file and we can use it and everything is good to go. So the next step is to install SimpleCov. We need to add these two lines of code to the top of our test, testhelper.rb file or inside of our spec, spechelper.rb, maybe our Rails helper, or if you're using Cucumber, there's a file for it and any other test suite might have other files that we need to modify. So we need to make sure we run these two lines of code in there somewhere. And so what we're gonna do is um, write a little bit of code inside of our template to go do that. Now, the first thing that we need to do is look up a way to prepend to file. That's the doc I pulled up earlier. And we can just simply specify prepend to file, the file name, and we can either give it the string if it's a simple one, or we can give it a block and the return value of the block will be the content that is inserted. So if we said prepend to file test test helper.rb, we can then give it 
a multi-line string. So I'm going to use a here doc and we'll say template. And we can paste in require simple cov, simple cov dot start. And if we leave this new line in there, we'll get a nice little new line inside of our file. So if we update our template here, we can run it again in our applications directory and you'll see that it adds it to the gem file. Um, it doesn't need to do anything special this time around because it's already in the gem file. Runs bundler and then it prepends to our test, test helper file. So now if we refresh here, we'll see SimpleCov is added just the one time because we had the matching um, insert from the last run. And then our test helper file has required simplecov, simplecov.start and that new line that we wanted at the bottom. So this is inserting that correctly into our application. Now to make this template a lot more functional for other people, we can actually improve it by adding support for RSpec. So one of the coolest th things that we can do here is actually we can run regular Ruby code. So we can have a files array here and we have test test helper.rb, we would want to check for spec, spec helper.rb, and we can add in any other files that we want there. And we can say files.each do file name, and then we can say if file.exist file name, then we could prepend it to that file name. So we can then go through each one of these, and we'll move this up to be indented uh, correctly, and then we'll end those if statement and loops. And then we can go through here and define all of these that we would like to support. So to add another file to insert SimpleCov into, it would be as simple as defining it inside of this array. Um, so we can go and update our template now, and we can run this against our application. So let's go and run this one more time. And this time around, um, what we'll see here is we'll see a file unchanged. The supplied flag value was not found. That doesn't really tell us exactly what um, is going on, but what it's saying is we found that snippet at the top of the file. We're not gonna insert it as a second duplicate. So in our test helper, it will stay uh, just as it was before when we already inserted this and you won't see a duplicate, which is nice. The error message is just not very descriptive of that. Now, um, in my little edit of the video, I actually added a spec helper file, and you'll see that SimpleCov was inserted to that, and you'll see that in the logs as well. So you see that it prepended to spec spec helper, and if we run this one more time against our code, um, you'll see that both of those are file unchanged. So this is working as expected, and we can support you know, Cucumber and other libraries that way. What's cool about this is you can go and ask the user, you know, are you using RSpec or Minitest? And this can go and run against that uh, specifically, but we can also build it in this way so that the user doesn't even have to be prompted. They can run the command to run your Rails application template to add SimpleCov and it will go ahead and run that for you. Now you can even go as far as saying, well, after we have installed SimpleCov, would you like to run your test suite and generate the test coverage? So that is an option that you could do. Um, you know, you could print out messages at the bottom, but you could definitely say, uh, let's ask the user if they would write, like to run their test suite. So one of the things you can do is say, yes, question mark, and that will give a prompt to the user and ask them to say yes or no. And if yes, you can run a command. So we could say, um, if yes, would you like to run your test suite and generate coverage reports? Then you could say run, uh, or Rails command really, is probably the one you should be doing. And you would say test. So this would run the Rails test command. You can see that in the Rails command example here. So you just spe specify Rails command db migrate if you wanna migrate the database. If we wanna run Rails test, we just specify test there. So we can run Rails command test. If so, 
So now if we run this again, we'll be prompted with that step and you can say yes and it will run Rails test. So that's going to generate inside of our coverage folder. We can open up coverage index.html in our browser and we'll see 100% covered in zero hits per line. So we don't have any code in our application, um, but that is all covered because we don't have any. So that's it for this episode on Rails application templates and how to create them. We set up SimpleCov, it's really, really easy to use, but the installation was a little bit manual and we can really easily automate that with a setup or install script using Rails Bytes, which is awesome. So if you are the author of a gem, I highly encourage you to try writing a Rails application template. We'd love if you used Rails Bytes to host it and uh, make it available to your users so you can install things um, in a more interactive way with your users and help them configure it on installation. So that is it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.